So here I have an icon uh, to prepare for oil gilding. So we're going to prepare the, the clay a little differently than we would with water gilding. It's going to be a little more straightforward. Um, we're not going to do too much sanding and polishing. But with this clay, uh, the clay is very much like any pigment. So if I just use the clay on the panel, but there is no binder, nothing holding those uh, clay molecules together, eventually the clay would just uh, flake off. So we have to have some kind of binding agent in that, in that uh, clay bowl. Uh, a common approach is to just use some kind of size, some kind of adhesive. I often use fish glue. Um, I find that works really well, or you can use rabbit skin glue or, or gelatin. But here, because I'm preparing this, this panel for uh, oil gilding, I'm not so concerned about what adhesive I'm using. So I actually just mixed in um, some Venetian red acrylic paint, and it's actually the acrylic medium that is going to be binding together uh, the clay molecules. And I use Venetian red because it's already, you know, very similar to that clay color. And then I've gone ahead and mixed it uh, with a little bit of water just to tone it down. So on this icon, I'm actually decided to gild the entire background and the halo because I want to further demonstrate how to put those halo lines back in after the gilding is on. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the clay to the entire background and I'm using just a very standard flat brush because I want something that's not going to leave brush strokes. So what I like to do is start closest to the figure and go ahead and develop a nice crisp edge and then I just brush brush the clay out. And we're not going to nearly use as many layers of clay as we would if we were doing water gilding. So there we have it. There is two layers, or one layer actually, of that clay, and I'm going to go ahead and give it two layers, a second layer. So there we are. That is two layers of bowl. So I'm going to set this aside and just let it dry for, for a few minutes and then we'll go about sanding our bowl ever so slightly. So I've given this clay ample time to dry overnight and I can see it's actually very nice and smooth but just to be sure it's completely flat I'm going to take just a small sheet of very fine sandpaper. This is 600 grit. And I'm going to go ahead and sand my bowl. But as a sanding block, I'm going to use just a standard pink rubber eraser. I'm going to go ahead and put my sandpaper in that eraser. And this will help to give it to get it even more flat. If I were just to fold it and use my fingers, um, I put uneven pressure, which gives me a better chance of cutting through the clay altogether, hitting the gesso. So instead, I'm going to use this pink eraser as my sanding block, just to keep it nice and level. And just very gently, I'm going to give it a quick sanding. And if I notice that I'm going through to the gesso, too much, I might need to apply additional layers of clay. 
play. But I actually think that's good. That's nice and smooth. So I'm going to clear off the dust. I like to use these microfiber cloths. You can get them pretty much anywhere now. And it's just really good because it really collects all that dust. I want to get all of that dust off my clay surface. There we go. And I'll actually use this microfiber cloth to give it something of a polish. There we go. And if some of the dust gets on the gesso, that's okay. You, you'll stain it a little bit, but we're gonna paint over all of that. So this icon is now ready to oil gild. 